Hey guys, today I'm gonna quickly show you how to make chashu because in my next video we're gonna be making delicious tonkotsu ramen. It's a bit of a complicated process, so I thought I'd share with you how to make just the chashu first. Today, we're starting off with a block of pork belly. The important thing here is, we want this nice layer of fat around the outside like this and that it's large enough to roll up. The first thing we want to do is remove any moisture with a paper towel. And if your meat is a little uneven, you can always remove any parts that stick out. Maybe stir fry these bits or use them for other dishes. Once that's done, we're gonna stab both sides of our pork with a fork, like this. And then, I'm gonna add some shallow slices down the non-fat side of our pork belly. This will help our meat absorb the flavors of our sauces and marinades later. Now, it's time to rock and roll. Or just uh, roll. Anyway, you wanna roll this up quite tightly and make it so the end with the least fat ends up in the middle. Once that's rolled, we wanna tie this up with a kitchen twine to make sure it doesn't fall apart while we cook it. Start with one tight knot at the end and we're gonna loop the twine around our hand, pull the pork through and tighten. Repeat this step, loop, tighten, loop, tighten. Once you've reached the other end of your pork roll, make sure the string is nice and tight. And we will also wrap the twine around the length of the pork a few times before tying one last knot to keep it all together. And done! Next, we want to add our pork to a saucepan with enough water to completely cover it. Heat this until it reaches a boil. And once it does, we're gonna drain this off and rinse both the meat and our pan. This is called yude koboshi and helps get rid of some of the bitterness and odor in the pork fat. Now, in our washed pan, we're gonna add some aromatics. I have some chopped ginger and cloves of garlic as well as a few green stems of Japanese negi, green onion. Now we put our pork back and add enough water again to cover that all. Let's turn up the heat and we're gonna let this simmer for 90 minutes. Now, if your pan is quite small like mine, it could start to overflow while it boils. An easy way to stop this is by adding a piece of paper towel over the top like this. Also, if you begin to notice that the liquid has started to evaporate a bit too much, add some more water to the pan. We're gonna use some of this liquid later for our final sauce. Once 90 minutes have passed, our pork is nice and soft and cooked all the way through. Let's take this out and measure out 500 milliliters of the liquid from our pot to use later. Now it's time to make the sauce that'll flavor our chashu. Into a pot, I'm gonna add 100 milliliters of Japanese cooking sake and the same amount of mirin. Now let's turn on the heat and you could leave this cooking for a few minutes to burn off the alcohol or do it the more the extreme way. Either way is fine, but be careful. Once the alcohol has burnt off, we're gonna add 4 tablespoons of sugar and give that a little stir so it doesn't burn. Then, we're gonna add 250 milliliters of soy sauce, 500 milliliters of the liquid from earlier, and lastly, another 500 milliliters of water. We'll bring this up to a simmer and make sure all the sugar has dissolved before adding our meat. And I'm also gonna add half a chopped onion which will add a nice natural sweet flavor to the sauce. We're gonna simmer this on low heat for 40 minutes, but every 10 minutes or so, let's turn the meat around. Once again, we wanna use some of this liquid for later so add water if it starts to evaporate a bit too much. Now 40 minutes is up, we can take out our nice marinated chashu. And our final step is we're gonna add this to a frying pan over a medium high heat and get that nice crispy skin. Oh, music to my ears. Once we see the fat of our pork turn a nice brown on each side, we will set that aside for a second and add two full ladles of our sauce from before with that melted fat. We will let this reach a simmer and thicken up 
Make sure to remove the twine from your chashu and then coat it in this rich, flavorful, and delicious sauce. And that's how you make the perfect chashu, guys. Make sure you check out my next video where we're gonna be making tonkotsu ramen, which is perfect with the chashu we made today. See you next time, guys.